people can say they've traveled in circles with the Kennedys. Castro, Marilyn, premiered a film at Sundance, all after overcoming addiction. I'm Jan Saragoni, and in this week's Power Player, we speak with Christopher Kennedy Lawford. This is your third book, Recovered to Live. It's a very personal look at a very personal experience you've had with addiction. What prompted you to write this book? Well, I wrote uh, Recover to Live, which I brought you a copy Thank you. of. You're welcome. Uh, because I have the credibility, not to mention my legacy, to actually access the best and the brightest in the world to, to talk about what addiction is and what it isn't. If their, their solutions of drugs and alcohol or the behaviors that they're engaged in aren't working for them, they can actually are empowered with this book to do something about it. I've been in recovery for 26 years. I say, you know, alcoholism, addiction doesn't run in my family, it gallops in my family. You are a product of so many different environments, political, <laughs> Hollywood, uh, television. You are a dead ringer for your late great father, Peter Lawford. Was that hard to overcome the notion that, gee, uh, you're just going into acting because your father did. Did it help or hurt being the son of such a famous actor? I think it's hard to become anything that your father was. Mm -hmm. So for me, I never believed I was good enough as an actor. He was a talented guy, my dad, really talented. And he could sing, he could dance, he could do all that. I couldn't do all that. I came to it late in life, but never at my core level believed that I, was, that I would be good enough, so quite frankly, I wasn't. Speaking of your father, he was a member of the famous Rat Pack, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, Dean Martin. What was it like uh, being around those actors? Yeah, they did. Well, yeah, they were great. They were all great friends. They had a great time. I, you know, I tell this story a lot. I mean, my Frank Sinatra was my go uh, was godfather to my sister Victoria, who was younger than me. I godfather envy from a really young age because he would show up at her birthday parties with like really inappropriate presents for a three-year-old, like diamond earrings. Marilyn Monroe was a great friend of my parents. She taught me how to do the twist when I was six years old, and I, I, you know, I tell people all these things, but I have to say, you know. Those guys had everything you could possibly want in this world, and they all died from this illness. You know, they all had addiction, they were all miserable. My father died, you know, 20 years, terrible alcoholism at the end, died at 60, never saw his grandkids. The stuff in the world, the success, the power, the money, all that stuff doesn't mean anything. Now this disease will get you if you're in the, on the wrong side of the tracks or you're in the White House, it doesn't matter. Can you talk about bit about what it was like to make a uh, feature film, 13 Days, about the Cuban Missile Crisis, especially since your family played right. such a key role in that whole episode. One of the great benefits of doing it was uh, I got to go with Kevin uh, and, the, and the producer to Cuba and actually sit next to President Castro in the Palace of the Revolution and watch that film, which was extraordinary. He's a very interesting guy, to say the least. And then he got up at the end of the film and he looked at us and he goes, you made a great film about uh, the crisis of October, which is what they call it. But now you need to make a film about what was happening in Cuba. Speaking of films, many people may not realize that you got your start with Universal Studios acquiring American Graffiti, and then went on to Kiss Me Guido at yeah. Sundance. I was always interested in the film business. I went you know, at it from, a, a, from the other, other side of the camera, really, initially as a producer. And, worked at Universal, but then I became an actor when I got later in life at 30, which was a moment of either clarity or insanity, either one. <laughs> Kiss Me Guido was a film that I produced and also was in, went to Sundance. I also did a movie called Drunks that went to Sundance. But uh, I love independent films. It gives you more creativity. It's really... Right, right. And, so and I got to kiss a man and kiss me, Guido, which was very interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, like, talk yeah. about that. As an actor, it's always great to have things that scare you mm -hmm. when you show up on a set. When I did All My Children, which I did for a long time, I had to do a love scene with, uh, with Kelly Ripa. And so I showed up on the set and I thought, <laughs> I had always heard the story about Jack Nicholson. Sally Struthers was in the movie mm -hmm. and she was terrified. And Jack apparently showed up at her dressing room just in cowboy boots. <laughs> so I showed up on the set naked on this thing and they were like everybody it was ABC television it wasn't a movie so it was right. they were they were like what is he doing do we as a, as a society we tend to turn the addictions of people into entertainment 
and into cover stories in celebrity magazines. So the picture of Lindsay Lohan spilling out of a car. Right. Um, Imagine you know. if that she if that was a person with schizophrenia. Right. You would never mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. But they but we allow it in addiction. It's not like you can just like other mental illness where depression you can go see a psychiatrist and find the right antidepressant. There's not one pill that's going to fix this. Okay, there may be a pill involved, there may be psychosocial involved, you might need to treat the family. You've got to address every aspect of a person's life. But if you do it right, and you do it intensively first time, you'll never have to do it again.